Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today we're seeking marine life off the coast of South Africa. This episode of Animal Watch has been sponsored by High Tech South Africa Clothing. South Africa. Beautiful, rugged and vast. Iconic mountain ranges stretching alongside expansive coastlines and crashing tides that adorn beaches that reach for miles and miles into the distance. But how about the wildlife that lurks below these waters? These mystical, dramatic and often chaotic seas. Home to the big marine five. Whales, penguins, seals, dolphins and of course, sharks. Home to the feared and equally revered great white shark. These sharks swim these waters annually seeking their favourite food, Cape Fur Seals. Shark Alley, the thin stretch of water between Dyer Island and Geyser Rock, boasts an extremely large number of great whites that circle the islands and swim through the narrow channel, hoping for a fatty snack of seal blubber. This week, Animal Watch has been invited to the award-winning, beautiful private nature reserve Hootbos in Hansby, South Africa, who are responsible for unbelievable conservation projects and efforts in the community. Hootbos and their foundation have restored 2,500 hectares of rare Fainbos back to its former glory, creating wildlife corridors so that once locally extinct animals have a way of returning. Part of the perks of supporting Crude Boss's work and staying in their luxury eco lodge is being able to visit the epic and diverse sea life just a 15 minute drive away. Today I'm off with Marine Dynamics out on the search for the Big Marine 5. The swell has been large the last couple of days, but today we decided to take advantage of the calmer waters and brave the still choppy seas in search of these iconic marine animals. Now, great white shark numbers have been plummeting in recent years, and we are also early into the whale season, so to find either of these animals will be a real find indeed. As we head out into the choppy waters, it's exciting to imagine that we are probably riding above the Big Five right now. I've been told that the wind will build up again later, meaning certain sea swell, so I'm keen to get cracking on in the small window we have. We journeyed out and suddenly we were surrounded by shy albatrosses gliding past us with their immense 101 inch wingspan and these were a smaller variety of albatross. We watched as an albatross landed on the water to eat a cuttlefish, and as if by magic, more and more shy albatrosses landed. This was an extremely rare event, as this species is near threatened and pretty much unheard of to have so many land around a boat in one go. Well, this is unbelievable. We've now got nine albatrosses. They just keep landing and flying in. It's like a great big albatross meeting happening here right now. Oh my goodness, we've got a tenth one coming in. After the delights of these rare albatrosses, we decided to see if our luck was in. So we decided to head out on the search for a whale. Now June is still very early on in South Africa's whale season and some of the whales were only just arriving. So finding one would be tricky but not impossible as there had been several sightings by local people over the last few days. 
Right, Annika, we're gonna just take a slow cruise around in the bay. We're in slight deeper waters. We're looking out for our species of whales migrating either through this area, and then we've also got the brood as well, which is a permanent resident in our area. Yeah. If we're gonna go out to see these guys, we're looking either for a spout. Yeah. Um, each time they're obviously marine mammals, so they take a breath, and normally uh, you'll see the condensation of the warm air um, on the cold surface. And then we we'll also might be lucky see some sudden right whales. So our season is about to start, Fantastic. and then we're also on migrating route of the humpback whales. So, Wonderful. Well, fingers yeah. crossed. So we've headed out, and we're about two miles off Danger Point in Claimby, and we've just stopped the boat for a little while to see if we've got a chance at spotting some whales. There's going to be a few points that we're going to today because, of course, we're quite early in the season. So not all the whales are here yet, but we're keeping our fingers crossed and we're going to hang out here and see if we can see any signs. And if we can't see any, we're going to move on to the next point. We slowed the boat and scouted for signs. And there it was, a blow of water in the distance. So they've seen a spout over there in the distance in the dark water. So we're going to head over there and see if we can see what is causing it, what type of whale. As we closed in on the mysterious spout of water, it became clear that what we had found was a Brutus whale, spelled Bride's whale. The Brutus whale can grow up to a huge 44 feet and is a baleen whale, which means that it has plates in the mouth for straining plankton from the water. They also enjoy eating small fish. Brutus whales are known to display seemingly erratic behaviour compared to other baleens, surfacing at irregular intervals and changing direction for unknown reasons. This meant it would be very hard to predict the next time the whale was going to surface. It was going to be tricky to film him, that's for sure. But then, a little Cape fur seal popped his head up out of the water. He was riding in the wake of the whale, scooping up all of the tiny fish that escaped the jaws of this immense animal. This meant that we would be able to follow the seal in order to find out where exactly the whale would surface next. Clever, huh? Thanks, little guy. The Brutus whale gave us a few exciting peaks before disappearing into the depths with his seal chaperone. It was now time to visit one of the most exciting places in South Africa's ocean, Shark Alley. Shark Alley is the thin stretch of water between Dyer Island and Geyser Rock, home to hundreds of Cape fur seals. Known to team with the highest density of great whites during the time the seal pups leave their parents, which was starting just around now. Well, I am in one of the most exciting places on earth. Yes, this is the notorious Shark Alley. And underneath me, great white sharks are prowling between these two islands where we have got colonies of the Cape fur seal. Now this time of the year the great whites are starting to to come in because the baby seals are just about to leave their family groups. They're nice and fat and that is what the great white shark is after. So to be quite honest I'm certainly not wanting to fall off this boat and go plop into these waters down below because really it is one massive ocean of teeth underneath there. But look at these seals, aren't they fantastic? They're playing and they're frolicking. They need to just make the most of it before they leave their family groups. As I looked down at the depths, all I could think of was how many great whites were predating underneath our boat. It was very exciting. The seals played happily unaware of what was to happen over the next few weeks when they would get their first chance to dip their flippers into the shark infested waters for the first time. And for many, it would be.
the last. Cape fur seals are recognisable by their cute external ears that protrude either side of their head. They are large and robust, but numbers are declining from overfishing and local thieves taking their abalone food. We were shockingly told that the seals had been caught eating penguins and seabirds' stomachs in order to get to the fish inside. This was because wild fish stocks were running so low. This is a shocking and upsetting fact, which shows how much damage overfishing has done. But then the most exciting call of all came through. A great white shark had been spotted off the side of a cage diving boat. This was excellent news as great white sightings in South Africa has been plummeting over the last few years. If anyone could find a great white, it looked like marine dynamics were the people. We headed off as fast as possible over the choppy sea. I held on praying not to be seasick, excited at the prospect of seeing my very first great white. All right, so we made a detour to come over to these, these shark boats where there's a great white shark has been sighted underneath the boat and they're all sitting there in the cage. It's really, really, really choppy and they're baiting the water now. And if we look closely, we might just be able to get a shot of the great white. We arrived at the shark cage boat and the choppy seas meant that everyone in the cages were being face planted repeatedly into the sea. Not for the claustrophobic or travel sick, that's for sure. We heard cheers and it seemed that a great white was patrolling the boat. And then we saw him. Wow, his tail slapped the cage and he dived back under. We hung around hoping for another sighting and then, oh my God, he came out and managed to grab the bait and we saw those razor sharp teeth of his. The divers below had a perfect view of the shark gliding by. Dominic, look! Woo! Look at that! <gasps> that was crazy. Great whites can grow to a whopping six meters and are believed to live up to 40 years. The great white shark has a reputation as a fearsome man-eater and is probably the most feared of all animals that live in the oceans. But there's no reason to fear this shark any more than any other carnivorous animal. According to the International Shark Attack File, there have been an average of just over 60 shark attacks per year worldwide over the last decade. And that is almost definitely mistaken identity. Sharks only like fatty mammals and humans are way too bony for them. So when a human is bitten, they are usually never consumed, showing that the shark was test biting the human, then rejecting them after realizing that it wasn't their preferred food source. Staggeringly, 100 million sharks are killed by humans annually, devastating the populations around the globe. Shockingly, we were told by Marine Dynamics that even the orcas were killing and eating the great whites in South Africa for their liver, as the orcas' food sources were also now in serious decline. These are very scary and worrisome facts, showing how the great white must be protected at all costs. Finally, we braved the choppiest of seas to make it home safely to shore, and boy, was I relieved. Well, I've had a really exciting day and I've got a very soggy wet cap because of course it blew off the back of the boat, completely typical. But we saw some fantastic animals, didn't we? We saw some whales, we saw some Cape fur seals and of course the exciting great white shark. And if you enjoyed this episode of Animal Watch, give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you're interested in going out around South Africa looking at the great five marine animals. Then we have 
Marine Dynamics, which are a fantastic company to actually go out with. I'll pop their website underneath at the bottom. And please be sure to tune in every single week where I'll be bringing you some fantastic episodes on animal rescue, wildlife, wolves and conservation. Bye for now. Woo! If you would like to find out more about discovering the Big Marine 5 near Hansby, South Africa, then visit www.sharkwatchsa.com. If you would like to find out more about the award-winning nature reserve Rootbos that I stayed in while visiting these amazing sea creatures, please do drop by www.grootbos.com. And a special thanks to the High Tech South Africa team who sponsored Animal Watch with their supreme outdoor clothing. You can find their website here, www.high-tech.co.sa. Thank <laughs> you.